based abroad, right? And um, most of the guys that produce music, you know, they put their music on some of these streaming platforms. So all the revenue, you know, they get part of the revenue, but, you know, the majority of the revenue goes to other countries and, you know, it's used to establish those countries. Now, I ask myself this question. Why don't we have those streaming platforms here in Nigeria designed by Nigerians? And I think it's because we really don't believe in what we do. I'll tell you why. I went to research on how to start a streaming platform, not like a Spotify or an Apple or an Amazon, but, you know, I'm talking about the likes of them, DistroKid, those digital distribution stores. I researched about it and I found out that you're a regular individual, you and I, you know, we could own a digital distribution company and it doesn't even take so much. Business I think idea. we should actually. We should. It doesn't take so much. But we don't actually believe in what we do. Mm. So if one person, say Zibi wants to start a distribution company, right? And this will probably lead into another set, another another amusing. If mm. you wanted to start, I believe if all of us in this room were musicians or are musicians, then we should all, you know, band behind, go behind, join your label and say, hey, we're going to use your platform to distribute our music all around the world. And this is how platforms grow. But because we don't believe in what we do here in Nigeria, we don't do that. And it's a problem and it's really sad. So I would say that I've made a list of distribution platforms around here in Nigeria and Africa, but I haven't. But I know that there are a few of them. So if you're a musician, if you're a podcaster, if you have content that you want to share online, look for African platforms, look for Nigerian platforms and let's support our own and let's see where it goes from there. I absolutely agree with you. Um, it might be some sort of perhaps mental slavery in some way where we just don't see what we've done as good enough But it could also be because perhaps when things are done here, they are not designed to Sometimes meet shady. international exactly standards So if you're gonna have a streaming platform in Nigeria and you want everyone to sort of use that platform Then you want to make sure that it's at par with the big names across the world and uh, quality is something that we absolutely need to work on <laughs> here in Nigeria. Now moving on to our second musing, this has to do with PR. Now individuals go out of their way to make sure that they might have a team to help with their PR, make them look good, you know, get people attracted to what they do. Organization, brands even do that and it's amazing but countries are taking PR very seriously. Now, I was having a conversation last night with a very good friend and um, he'd been living in a country for about four months because of some work he was doing just temporarily. But it was amazing the things that he told me because it's in stark contrast to what the world believes about this country and not in a positive way. Mm. But everyone, including here in Nigeria, believes that that country is so amazing because, well... It's got good PR, right? And Talk about this country? Yeah, it's in East Africa. Okay. Yeah, it's in East Africa. So it got me thinking. He said, honestly, Nigerians are way more honest. And I was stunned when he said that. But it got me thinking, could citizens of Nigeria actually be better at PR for their nations? Because when you go on social media... It's, it's always a, bashing. I know. Always bashing. People are traveling, whether it's for three months or one month, they're like, oh, Nigeria, this is my passport. Goodbye, the evil you've done. <laughs> and, and it's so weird, right? So people are going for maybe long term, I don't know. But it just seems like a lot of people don't see that there are positives in Nigeria. And then Nigerians complain about being treated badly by governments of other countries. Well, that's the PR that we're putting out. Exactly. They see us for the way we, I mean, what's that word? Dress the way you want to be addressed. Mm. So the way we treat ourselves or talk about our country, you know, sometimes they address us that way. And that's the problem. So, yeah, wherever you do go, be positive. At least try as best as possible to be positive. Speaking of positivity, uh, there was this picture trending a few weeks ago on social media. The guy was driving a Tesla somewhere in Lagos, right? And he wrote fuel, L-O-L. And it was hilarious. It was hilarious because, I mean, laugh out loud, feel, you know, that's <laughs> yeah. it. We're not on the same level, right? <laughs> and I loved it. However, I thought about this. Tesla is produced where? In the US, right? Mm. Uh, Volkswagen cars are produced in Sweden. I think they're driven. Germany. In Germany. Okay. And, you know, other cars like Suzuki, Geely, they're produced in Japan and China. But these guys push their brands. What do we produce here in Nigeria? Nobody, I mean, think about it. Prior to this time, we'd say Peugeot, right? However, 
we now have the inner sim motors, right? They're assembled here. I don't know if they're really produced here, but they're assembled here. Long story short. So I think if you're going to drive a brand, we should have like government policies that would say, you know what? Everyone in government should drive this. The university from their vice chancellor down, you know, people in this place, they mm -hmm. should be companies that they, they should reach out to companies and say, everyone, every one of your staff should have a car, but it should be this brand. And then they should be given at very, very subsidized right. rates. So it's like a partnership. Exactly. Yeah. And then we can do this PR you talked about to other countries. And these, this is how brands grow. But I don't know. I think if I could have a word with someone in charge and then give them this plan, it would make a lot of sense, really. This makes so much sense because, I mean, getting a brand new car right now in Nigeria is a ton of money. So imagine if people who have regular nine to fives or whatever jobs it is have an opportunity to own cars, perhaps with payment plans at a reduced rate. That would actually do a Pay lot. For five years. Pay yes. for seven years. You know, it would make a lot of sense. Mm, brilliant. Right, so moving on to our fourth musing. This one has to do with um, Twitter and testing the edit button. So over the years, people have been making demands on Twitter, asking for edit buttons, right before Elon went on and uh, tried to get into a deal <laughs> he's trying to back out of right now. Uh, he had also tweeted in support of that edit function. Well, I just saw this, and I don't know how it came up on my timeline, but apparently Twitter is now testing the edit button. I mean, it sounds decent but it makes you wonder could it be open to misuse so okay so think about this right apparently you can edit a tweet a few times within 30 minutes okay so someone tweets something and someone agrees someone retweets a group of people agree and then that person there are a lot of mischief makers on and social media edit that theme, exactly right? edit it into something totally different from what it originally was and then it can be seen that, you know, retweeting it, you may have endorsed it, you might have commented on it. And I'm just wondering, do we really need that edit button if it could be manipulated? Well, you know, there's an edit button on Instagram as well. So sometimes you put out a caption and then you realize, oh God, there was a typo. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to That's edit. True. So that could also be the case for Twitter. However... Twitter is full of mischief makers, mm. so that's why I can that's understand. That's the zone. Why, I understand the concern there, but mm -hmm. you know what? I, I think we should give it a try. And let's see where it goes okay. from there, particularly. For our final reason, I want to talk about the Gen Zs. Okay, so they're, they are the most talked about yet underrated bunch. And I say this because we have a lot of them around us. Now, if you have a conversation with, you know, the Gen Zs we have today, the younger people, you would find that they're loaded with ideas, loaded with so much information. And this is information that you and I didn't have, uh, didn't have back in our time. And the reason is because we were not, we didn't have this much access to information. Today, there's YouTube podcasts, everything is everywhere, you know? And you'd find that a 13, 14, 15 year old is already earning millions of dollars from social media, True. from basic things that you would never even imagine. You know, so I, I, I'm saying this because Back in the day, our parents wanted us to, you know, study medicine, law, you know, all of those good courses. And it's great. But now, you know, this still happens with Nigerian African parents. However, if you have a conversation with your your kid or your, your ward or whatever it is, and you just ask them, what do you want to do? And listen carefully because they have solid ideas and you never know. You just never know. Absolutely. I think the access to resources is a major, major boost for people. Um, however, with every subsequent generation, there's always a bit of a gap. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be that point where it seems like they can't really understand each other. They can't be on the same page because perhaps they have different ways of doing things. But indeed, if there is a bridge, I think it would definitely make the world and everything else a definitely much better place. That is for sure. Well, uh, that's it for our musings. Don't forget, you can send us your messages. Let us know what your thoughts are and we'll read them later on in the show. You can tweet us smooth981 or just send messages to us via WhatsApp 0809 444 0981.